Hi folks, it's Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. We're out here in the woods today, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about batoning with a knife. Um, seems to be a very popular thing online to beat the living hell out of your knife with a stick or a rock, and most of that is pretty unrealistic, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, what I've got here today, so I've got several examples of good field knives. That, uh, that, you, that are more than capable of batoning, but we're going to talk about their limitations a little bit, what kind of wood you might actually be able to baton with them, because there are some rules and some techniques to batoning that make it safe for you and your knife. And the biggest thing is, is that it needs to be safe on your blade. Um, most knives actually batoning with them, if you're looking at uh, doing what a lot of people do, you know, six, eight inch pieces of wood like this, um, you're putting a whole lot of undue stress on your knife uh, doing this act of batoning. And most, most knives end up suffering a failure right here, uh, a tang failure right at the hilt. Uh, they end up snapping off. And that's, that's really not that surprising to me. I mean, you're taking a piece of wood and you are beating this knife and putting all kinds of stresses on it that it's just really not meant to endure. Plenty of knives will, gr will, will gladly do batoning tasks, but let's talk a little bit about what batoning was meant for. Batoning originally was meant for wood about like this. Uh, the idea was, was that, you know, you can't really, this is a little wet, I got it off the ground, and the moisture that's in this wood, it's dry in the middle, but it's not on the outside. And the idea behind batoning was that you would take the knife, and you would start batoning it through so that you could get so that you could get the wet wood off the outside and get to the dry wood on the interior so that you can get down in there and get some decent fire kindling you know some tinder for your fire some dry wood i see a lot of guys with wood this size you know eight, nine, ten inches around and they're taking six, seven inch knives and batoning into it, uh, splitting the wood, processing it for firewood. And that, that's pretty unrealistic, you know. There are plenty of knives that will do that and, and are certainly capable of it. But what you're doing in the end is you are risking your most important survival tool by doing that sort of thing. You're looking to break a knife. You're putting it way outside of its, its uh, uh, parameters that it's supposed to operate in. And one of the reasons why batoning is mostly unsafe for the knife, when you're chopping with a knife, you know, stress hits here and at your handle when you go in with your knife. Two stress points. When you're batoning and you're in a really thick piece of wood and you've got your baton, you're centering up your knife but you're putting three stress points. One here at the forward impact point, one here in the middle, and generally your hand is pressing down to keep this knife level. So what you're doing is you're trying to bend this knife and you're putting most of the force and strain right here at the most vulnerable part of the knife, at the hilt. And if you get out of line with it where the knife is tilted like this and you have to come back and swat at the back of your knife to straighten it back out, what you end up doing is the knife is captured here, it's captured here with your hand, and by pounding here you're putting all of the stress force right there on the tang of the knife, right at its, its join point with the handle. Some knives can, can take this a lot better than others. This one probably is just fine for it, although I don't do it a lot. Uh, this one has a nice full tang running the length uh, of the, uh, the, hip, uh, the handle, and it's pretty thick, and there are no square edges under here. They're rounded off under here. There's, it's not just squared off. Those create stress points, and this knife doesn't have those. Some of the other knives, like this Topps knife, this uh, Pathfinder School knife, if you notice, it's a full tang all the way through, and it's rounded. It's rounded everywhere. So this steel is actually thicker back here in some places like this than it is at the blade. 
This knife is going to generate, or when stress is put on this knife, the knife is going to channel that force, that stress, and all those vibrations around these round edges. It's not going to let it center anywhere because there are no square edges on it, except for maybe right there. And even that is chamfered down with some jimping. But this knife, a knife this size, you can safely baton. This is about a four and a half inch bladed knife, and you can safely baton a piece of wood about two to three inches with this knife. A knife like this Essie, again, full tang construction, all the way both sides, it's rounded out, it's a five, uh, five inch blade, five and a quarter actually, and a piece of wood like this uh, is no problem. You know, you want to have enough area on the outside that you can get in there and, and give it a whack and have plenty of blades sticking out. A knife like this shouldn't be used to baton a, a six, seven inch piece of wood. It's just not going to do it. Um, the knife may be capable of surviving it, but the wood is really too big. And batoning is really meant so that, like I said, you can, you can clean off uh, wood from the outside and get to the dry interior of wood. Another thing that batoning is meant for is let's say we're, we're building a, a trap, a figure four trap, or something like that. You need to make precise cuts. Well, you can certainly do that. You can lay the stick down and say you want to make a precise cut right there. You can come right to the top of the knife and baton it off and make a nice uniform cut exactly where you wanted it. And that's fine, especially because you're centering the knife and you're pounding directly on the top, right on what you want to cut, right on top of it, like that. This doesn't generate lots and lots of stress on the knife. So this is perfectly fine. That's a fine activity for batoning. You can do that. Um, another example is this custom knife of mine. Again, full tang. Everything is rounded. There are no square edges on the knife. And this knife, of course, can certainly be batoned, and it could handle a piece of wood easily this big, maybe a little bigger. But I spend a lot of time in the woods with survival classes and just on my own. And I've been in the woods nearly my entire adult life, and I've never truly seen a need for batoning much of anything. Uh, maybe the precise cuts, but truthfully, all you're doing is beating the hell out of your knife in a way that you really don't have to. Um, people say, well, I'm cutting the wood up to process it for a fire. Well, is there any work that you're doing with the batoning of the knife that couldn't just as easily have been done by the fire? If I've got a piece of wood that's this size, I'll just burn it. I'll lay it in the fire the way that it stands. And if they say, well, I'm trying to make my fuel last, well, I can just put the end of this log into the fire and let it light and then move it in slowly as the fuel burns down. So I don't really see the need for batoning much of anything. I mean, I, I suppose that there are some small tasks that need to be done by batoning. Uh, sometimes when I'm making a, a spear and I want to make a, a gig, you know, I will take the knife and I'll put it here like this at the end of the stick and I'll baton it through you know, so that I get a nice even split uh, and it's controllable and I'm not cutting back on myself, I'll do that. But for the most part, batoning, uh, if you're working on wood about like this, that's perfectly fine as long as you have a, uh, a decent knife. Uh, a knife with a five inch blade should easily be able to do a three inch piece of wood. Uh, there is a technique to it and you do want to keep the knife straight. About midway is like that and make sure that the knife is straight. And when you're coming down and you're smacking on it and stuff, make sure the knife stays straight. Continue to pry back on it as you have to and make corrective adjustments so that you keep the knife straight all the way through. Otherwise, you're putting a lot of stress on the knife that doesn't need to happen. Tool steel knives tend to uh, take batoning activities a whole lot better than high carbon knives. Uh, although a high carbon knife like this would be just fine, something with rounded edges, something that doesn't have a small tang. Um, 
you know, this SE5, of course, you know, anything like that, that's going to do the job very well. But again, I don't see a lot of need for the batoning. If, uh, if you're down here like this, you got a piece of wood this size and you need to strip off the outer layers to get to dry, that's a fine use of batoning. Uh, but for the most part, I see guys online and they're taking pieces of wood this big around, saw cut wood, and they're batoning through it almost like a torture test. I don't know about you, I've been in the woods a whole lot, but on backcountry expeditions and stuff, I rarely, if ever, find 8 and 10 inch pieces of saw cut wood. These were directly made so we could do this video. Out in Mother Nature's wild, you know, there, there are no deer running around with chainsaws cutting down trees for you. And so finding big pieces like this uh, is pretty much a rarity unless you're just out in the woods on, on the back 40 near your house, you know, where you've been doing some clearing. Um, but the subject of batoning, you know, you can do it, it can be done safely, and you can do it with, uh, with a bunch of different knives. But again, ask yourself the question before you do it, is it necessary to do it? Uh, I see a lot of guys online outside, and they talk about they spent part of their day batoning. Well, for what reason? You know, was there a purpose behind it? And is there any work that, if it's firewood processing, is there any work that the fire couldn't do for you? rather than batoning with your knife. Um, in my experience, for the most part, there's very little work that uh, the fire won't do for you as far as processing firewood. Uh, getting the tinder, that's one thing. But processing a bunch of wood up into firewood, to be honest with you, I don't even chop up most of my firewood. Um, if the piece is too big, I really don't care. If this is my fire, I'll lay my large piece right down in the center and let it burn in half and then I'll fold the two ends in on the fire. Or I'll take and just put the end of it in and then slowly as it burns down I'll feed in the wood. And that's a much more efficient use of time and energy than sitting and cutting the wood up. Uh, you know in a survival situation you don't have a lot of calories in the first place so why bother? Uh, let the fire do the work for you. And as far as batoning and making whole big stacks of wood, um, there's not a lot of call for it, at least none that I've ever found. And I've been in the woods for, for better than 27 years, uh, you know, since I was a, a, a little kid and, and going out by myself in, in survival camp trips since I was a teenager, you know, around 13 or so. Uh, and I, I've just never found the need for it. Um, I'll tell you what, give me just a second, and we're going to come right back to this. We're back on batoning again, <laughs> and there, this knife, I notice a lot of guys run around with little knives, tiny knives, okay? This one's only got a four-inch blade, and I have one, and for me, this is a skinning knife and a fine work knife and so on. And you might see me run around every once in a while with only this knife, but very rarely. Um, for the most part, one of the reasons why people are out there batoning everything, in my opinion, just like this knife, this SE is a great knife and, and I like it. Uh, I think it's, it's fabulous and I think it's well suited to a lot of jobs. Um, but one of the reasons why you have to baton, and I see Bear Grylls and other people do it all the time, they'll have a tree that's about this big around, and they'll take a knife this size on this tree, and they'll start batoning it to cut the tree down. Because taking a knife this size and doing this is going to take you all day, and it's going to be pretty ineffective. I mean, you're just not going to get the work done. And I see a bunch of guys batoning the hell out of their knives because, in my opinion, they don't carry a large enough knife. The, the cure for having to baton trees this size over with, uh, you know, using a, a, a baton to cut it down, the answer is a larger knife. Um, this one is a 7-inch blade model. Uh, and it has served me extremely well over the years. I think it cuts like a samurai sword. Um, it, uh, it is capable. I can get up on it and do fine tasks. Okay, there's enough room for that. It's not the most comfortable work. 
I can make this work for most every use. I can skin animals with it and so on. Uh, a lot of people say that a knife this size is the only thing you can process small game with. Well, that's not true. Uh, if this knife is razor sharp, which it always is, um, believe me, I can get in there and do my fine work holding the knife like this, even on a small animal. So a lot of the a lot of the uses. Don't get me wrong. I like this knife and I like this knife, but as a basic field knife, I disagree with the conventional wisdom uh, that a five inch or six inch blade is where you want to be. For me, for the most part, a seven inch knife, I can make it work for most tasks. It will do a great job for me on almost every task that I try to perform. And so far, I have just never had one let me down. Um, so on the subject of batoning, as I said, mainly the reason why you have to baton to cut down small trees is because the knife is too small. Uh, and I don't have a problem with carrying two knives, this one and this one, so that I can do fine work and I can do larger work and have a good all-around go-to knife. So I think the cure for batoning in some cases is just carry a bigger knife. All right, we're back on the subject of batoning. I see batoning as more useful for smaller tasks. Again, like I was talking about before, making a tine, you know, this is a nice controlled way to do it. There we go, I've got a decent split. Turn the stick over, lay it in the center. That's an appropriate way to baton something in an appropriate uh, batoning method uh, and, and use for it. Um, but uh, for the most part, like I said, I see a lot of guys online, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they want to go out and baton and just torture test the knife to its breaking point. I've been seeing a lot of videos where cold steel recon scouts uh, have been breaking. Uh, the only ones that I've ever seen break <coughs> online <coughs> All of the reviewers, all the people who were doing it when they broke the knife, say that they broke it batoning. Uh, I've seen a bunch of broken K-bars, and a bunch of them online, if you look through YouTube, they're broken at the hilt, batoning. Some of them with side load, because the K-bar has that tendency. Um, but I see a lot of other really good knives, some cold steel products. Uh, you know, I don't see a lot of the super high dollar knives. Uh, you know, like a blackjack uh, or one of the tops knives or something. I don't see a lot of those broken, but most of the broken knives that I see that you wouldn't expect to break, uh, if you look, most of the reviews are because they were batoning. And I assume some of those were probably broken uh, because the, the user was batoning incorrectly. Uh, like I said, you know, batoning something you want to make sure that one, you've got an appropriate size piece of wood. You know, this is okay for this blade and knife, this size. And you want to make sure that you're keeping the blade straight. Like I said, I assume a lot of people have broken them because they're batoning improperly. And that was a proper batoning technique. And if you're going to, like I said, make the fine cuts, this is a proper batoning technique. So you got your nice smoother cut that you wanted. And hell, that one wasn't even all that smooth. Um, but you can get that sort of result. And it's important that if you're going to do it, that you do it right, do it correctly. I am not a fan of smacking the knife here back by the hilt. Not a fan of it at all. If the wood is so big that the knife won't make it through where you can keep all of the pressure out here, then the wood's just too big to baton in the first place. And again, like I said, I haven't found the need to do it. Um, and that's in 27 years of a lot of time in the woods. I haven't had uh, the need for it. So make sure that if you're going to do it, one, that your knife is, is well suited for the task. And two, make sure that you're using appropriate size pieces of wood and that you're doing it for an actual purpose, not just to be doing it. Um, in the field, this is your most important tool and putting it at great risk 
is, is not what you want to be doing. You don't want this thing broken where you're, you're out messing around in the field with uh, a knife that busted off at the hilt or broke in the center or something like that, and you're messing around with blade pieces. Um, it's your most important survival tool, so don't risk it unnecessarily. Um, again, check the size of the wood, make sure that you've got the right size of wood, make sure that your knife is of good quality and that you're doing it. Uh, there's a lot of knives out there, even cheaper quality ones, that will survive batoning for a long period of time. Uh, but you're rolling the dice, so uh, it may survive a long time, it may survive a short time, it may break on you the first time or the 100th time. And so do it only when there's a purpose to do it, make sure you're doing it appropriately, and other than that, always ask yourself the question, is there a need to be doing it in the first place? If there isn't, don't do it. I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. If you like what we do and you support us, please subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, share our videos. Thank you.